um, Angel and the Infernal Devices Illumicrate. Um, uh, uh, words. Hi everyone and welcome to the Books Are Everywhere. So this is the start of my week two reading vlog for whatever you want a thon. Welcome to Monday, welcome to week two. I thought I would just start with giving you a bit of a reading update with what I'm currently reading. So I'm currently reading everything I'm still currently reading at the end of my w week one reading vlog, which is Legendary by Stephanie Garber, The Maidens and Wuthering Heights. So, Legendary, I am this much the way through, so I'm about three quarters of the way through, which I should be because we're reading it over four days. Me and Alex are buddy reading this and um, it's the third day and I've just read today's pages so I only have one day to go so I will finish this one tomorrow. I'm glad we're reading these over only four days because they are so quick to get through and I can easily just sit down and read a hundred pages at a time which is what I love about these. I was saying at the end of my last vlog that these would be a great introduction to fantasy and I'm firmly standing by that. These are great, easy to understand, easy to read, such a kind of involved world and you feel very, um, there's a word for this I can't remember. You feel very drawn into the world, it's quite captivating which I really really like. This one kind of explores a different mystery to Caravel and I do still feel like this one lacks a little bit of the um, kind of magical atmosphere that Caraval has. This is my second time reading both Caraval and Legendary and I do think I'm enjoying this more because I'm reading them back to back whereas the first time I read this I had left a quite a long time between Caraval and Legendary and I think I am enjoying it more this time. Very much looking forward to Finale and seeing how I feel about that one because I haven't actually read that one before so that'll be quite cool. I wanted to make sure I read these back to back the first time I read Finale and it is finally happening because Alex hadn't read, I don't think she'd read Legendary or Finale so we're buddy reading those together. I will leave Alex's YouTube in the description below. I'm also reading The Maidens. I am this far of the way through so I don't actually have too much. I have about 140 pages left. This one comes out on June 10th so it comes out in three days and I want to finish it before then. I'm, I'm sure I will, I definitely will. I actually read a massive chunk of this last night and I'm really really enjoying it now. It's so fast paced, it's a great mystery. This one follows Mariana who is a group therapist and her some of her niece's friends start getting killed at a university that she attends, which is Cambridge University. This one definitely has some dark academia feels and it's very, very creepy in places, which I really, really like. And it's so intriguing and it's definitely very fast paced. And I read like 100 pages-ish last night, just in one go. So I'm hoping to maybe finish this one today, maybe. I'm also currently reading Wuthering Heights, which I'm listening to on audiobook. I'm sure I don't need to tell you what this one is about, um, but I'm really enjoying this one. I'm finding it kind of up and down, so for some stretches I really enjoy it, and then for some stretches I find it a little bit slow. But I am still really enjoying this. Glad I'm listening to the audiobook, as I find this one quite daunting because of the tiny tiny font and it is quite thick um but I don't have too long to go I think about I have about 100 pages of this one left I have pretty much exactly 100 pages left hang on I have exactly 100 pages left of this so I'm hoping that I'll maybe finish this tomorrow as I have quite a long drive tomorrow so I'm gonna see a friend so maybe I'll finish this one tomorrow so I've been listening to that one while I've been driving and then the last update I have isn't a book that I'm reading, but it's some book mail that I recently got. This is from Titan Books. So thank you, Titan. This is sent to me. This isn't a proof copy, but the publishing company did send it to me. And this one is a short story collection about vampires. And there is some great authors in here, some very classic YA authors such as V. Schwab and some fantasy authors. Very, very excited to read this one. And from what I understand, this is being turned into a Netflix TV show. Um, I think. I might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure this is being turned into a Netflix show. So I'm very excited to read this one. I love V. Schwab's writing a lot, so as soon as I saw that she was going to be as part, part of this one, I wanted to read it. I'm not exactly sure of the release date of this, so I'm going to look it up for you. 
So this one actually came out on the 25th of May, so you can go and buy this right now. So thank you to Titan for sending me this one. So that is kind of my update for the day so far. So today I'm going to focus on probably hopefully finishing the maidens this afternoon as i have been reading big chunks of it and finding it very easy to read which is cool and i've already read today's pages of legendary so once i finish the maidens i will move on to another book i'm not sure what i'm gonna pick up next so that's quite exciting so i will let you know about that later hi it's later in the day i haven't read anything since i last spoke to you but i just won an auction on ebay to get my unicorn the one book that I need to complete my collection that I missed out on years ago. The one special edition that I have wanted for years. And I've been following all sales on eBay and Facebook and Depop and wherever else religiously every day for the past at least six months or more than six months. Definitely probably the past year. It was a lot, a lot of money, but I have a pile of books that I'm going to sell which will hopefully get me back the same amount of money, if not just a little bit less. So in theory I'm trading it, which is how I'm looking at it, because I can't really afford to drop that much on a book otherwise. I am still in shock, I'm really shaky, I'm not going to tell you what it is, I'm going to tell you a bit later in the vlog because hopefully it will arrive later this week. But I can't believe it. I can't believe I finally have one. It's the one thing I've wanted to complete my collection. <laughs> the, literally the one thing. The one thing. So I'm going to go and stick some books up on eBay now. <laughs> and try and get some of my money back. <sighs> can't believe this. I can't believe it. <laughs> It's about 7pm on Monday evening and I've just finished The Maidens. <laughs> this one was brilliant, honestly. It picked up pace so much after the 100 page mark and I've read the last 250 pages since last night pretty much in two sittings. Honestly, this was unputdownable after the 100 page mark. I was so intrigued by the story. I never guessed where it was going. I never ever guessed. I had my suspicions about different people none of those were the person that I thought it was going to be. I never put my finger on what was going to happen in the story and it was so so cool to find out. I was so so enthralled by this book and I didn't want to put it down. I'm very very impressed with this honestly. Um, this follows Mariana and she is a little bit unhing unhinged herself because of what she's going through and that was one of the only things that I struggled a little bit with the story because I didn't quite know where she stood on some things and I felt that she was a little bit kind of unhinged in her reasoning with, with things. Sometimes I think she could have been a tiny bit more likeable but I was quite sympathetic with her and I yeah I did real, really feel for her throughout this story. It was so so clever how this was put together, it really was. My only slight complaints are the fact that I wasn't as connected to Mariana as I wanted to be and I wasn't really connected to this story for the first 100 pages. It did kind of take 100, 150 pages to get into. I was intrigued at first but I wasn't really hooked until about the 150 page mark when I then just carried on and read most of this book in two sittings. The only other thing I wanted to point out was the fact that the love interest in this one who ends up being the love interest because I think it's very hard to put a love interest into something that also you're trying to find the murderer because the, it was very cleverly written in the fact that um, the author wanted to not reveal who it was obviously and because of that you never actually know whether the love interest is completely innocent which the only thing was I did never really rooted for them and never really found the love interest that much of a likeable person um which disappointed me slightly but this one is definitely a solid four stars i really really enjoyed it so this one has been the maidens by alex michaelidis and this one comes out on june 10th so by the time you're watching this video it will be out it's out in three days right now um honestly go pick this one up i really really would recommend it i really really enjoyed it i loved the dark academia feels i love how this was kind of immersed in 
Greek tragedy and Greek mythology. It's taught me a lot about Greek mythology, which I don't know a lot about, but I am reading another Greek book this, um, or Greek mythology book this month, which I'm sure you will see in an upcoming vlog. So that takes me on to the book I want to read next, which honestly, I haven't really got a set order for my TBR for the readathon. I was just gonna pick up what I want to pick up. There's a few things like Caravelle that I'm buddy reading, so obviously, me and Alex are deciding when to read that and there's another buddy read that we want to do while we're on holiday together later this month um, and I have a couple of ideas for ones I want to save for around that time, like short ones and stuff. But I've decided I'm going to pick out Blackout. This is by Danielle Clayton, Tiffany D. Jackson, Nick Stone, Angie Thomas, Ashley Woodfolk and Nicola Yoon. This is another proof copy I have that actually comes out on the 24th of this month. This is not on my whatever a thon TBR actually, but it's just one that I wanted to get to because of it coming out later this month. And I'm really excited for this one. As far as I know, it is six short stories written by these six different authors. And it all follows a New York blackout and they are all trapped in this blackout and I think their stories might intersperse kind of down the line. Um, and it's just about different people, I think different teenagers who are kind of trapped in this blackout in New York City, which I'm really excited for. And it's only 250 pages, so it's super short. So I am very excited to read this one. I don't think it's gonna take me too long to read. And it says, this year's most joyful celebration of love from the biggest voices in YA, blackout love stories glow when the lights go down i think it's about friendship it's about romance it's about all these different people that get stuck in the blackout which i'm very excited for it has these photos of the authors in the back and i'm gonna read this one also a nice thing to vlog because i can update you as i go on the stories so i'm hopefully gonna read a couple of these tonight because i can start a new book tonight so that's exciting so Blackout is my next read and I will update you this one on this one as I read it. As I said, I'm not reading it for the readathon, but I will be including this one, both of these, in my pointage tracking for the readathon, so they will kind of count. Um, they're just not on my original TBR, so I will include them still. So I will update you probably later or tomorrow with how I'm finding Blackout and Legendary and Wuthering Heights <laughs> tomorrow, because I'll be reading all of those. <laughs> It's Tuesday and um, I am nearly, nearly done with Legendary. I literally have like 30 pages to go and I really want to finish it, but I have to go out in a minute and do some stuff. Um, and I'm meeting a friend for um, a late lunch, so I need to go out, but I really want to finish this. I've actually enjoyed or am enjoying this one a lot more than I expected to because the first time I read it, I just found it quite a disappointment after Caraval. It does kind of lack some of the magic that I've, or the atmosphere that Caraval has, but it's definitely not disappointing me as much. Um, so that's good. I'm very, very excited to start Finale tomorrow because I've never read Finale, whereas I have read Caraval and Legendary before. So that's very exciting. But yeah, I am quite enjoying it. It does kind of lack some of the magical feeling and atmosphere that is set up in Caraval. I don't feel quite as attached to the story but it is very intriguing, it's very entertaining, it does still have the kind of same magical feeling in a way. Um, and yeah, very excited to see where this s series goes in the last book. Um, I did start Blackout last night but I'm literally only 20 pages in because I ended up editing a video instead. So I don't really have too many opinions on that so far but I like where it's going. Um, and I'm about to read Wuthering Heights in the car. <laughs> Um, on my way so I have a long journey ahead of me today so hopefully I'll get quite a lot of that read today. Also need to go for a run at some point over the next few days but I realised that I actually have an event tonight that I'd forgotten about. <laughs> um, oops so I don't know if I'll fit a run in, hopefully I will even if it's just a short one. We will see, so I will update you probably later once I've actually finished Legendary and I have started a bit more of Blackout and read a bit of Wuthering Heights, so I will speak to you then. Thank you.
it's Wednesday, you'll have to excuse my wet hair because I've just got out of the bath and I can't wait any longer to film this clip. I've already waited long enough to film it. It's also so hot today in the UK. I feel like every day is just getting hotter and hotter and I'm enjoying it. But I'm now having to wear like very loose clothing and stuff because it's very, very warm. But hopefully I'm going to read outside for the afternoon, which will be nice. I have a lot of books next to me because I have quite a big uptake to do, even though I did talk to you guys yesterday. I ended up going getting home quite well later than I expected after a lovely day with my friend. Um, we went for a meal and I felt really comfortable everywhere we went and it was really, really nice. We also went to a bookshop, in which I'll talk about, and you will have seen some clips from. And uh, yeah, that was lovely. And then I had an event with Hachette online as soon as I got home, which was a bookseller event with some of their upcoming releases and some appearances from authors, which was lovely. And then I went for a run quite late because I think I might switch to evening runs for the summer because of it being slightly cooler. I did quite a long run last night, an hour long run, which was longer than I didn't know how long I was going to run for, but I didn't get back um, from that until about quarter past nine. So big update for today instead. So I finished Legendary last night, did enjoy this one more than I did the first time and more than I expected to, but this one definitely does still lack a little bit of what Caraval has, the kind of magic vividness. Um, that Caraval has, it's very plot, he it's very location heavy, sorry Caraval is, it's very setting heavy, which I absolutely love about it, whereas this one is more character and plot driven, the plot was great, I love the characters, I just missed some of the very minute descriptions of the world that really made me vividly picture it in Caraval, which I didn't quite get with this one. So this one got four, four out of five stars instead of five, Kind of what I expected, it's what I rated it before. I still love this one and as I put in my review when I read this a couple years ago, comparing it to other books it's amazing but you can't help but compare it to Caraval because I've just read Caraval, it's the first book in the series. But I did still really really enjoy it, I do love this series. I have just started Legendary. Um, this has the dust jacket just over the cover, hang on, <laughs> take that off. There we go, so I've just, sorry, I've just started Finale, which is the last one in the series, and I am only 60 pages into this so far. This is the only one in the series I haven't read before, but I wanted to, after I read Legendary, I'd left a gap between Caraval and Legendary, and I wondered if that was why I didn't connect to it so much. So I decided that with Finale, I would read them back to back and see if it made it any better. Um, and I've really enjoyed reading them back to back. I definitely think my experience of Legendary improved on the first time by doing so, and I'm glad I'm doing it with Finale as well. I'm already finding this better than Legendary. I just feel more enchanted by it, more captivated by it. This is told by both Scarlett and Donatella, which I really like. I definitely have missed Scarlett's narration. So Scarlett narrates Caraval, Donatella, her sister, narrates Legendary, and then the both of them narrate Finale. Definitely have missed Scarlet, which I didn't actually think I had, so that's really cool that she's back. And I'm already yeah, enjoying this a bit more. I'm reading 122 pages of this today, to be precise, so I might update you later with my more thoughts and feelings. So we're reading this one over four days, me and Alex are buddy reading this one as well, so excited to finally be reading this one. Finally reading Finale. <laughs> And then just a quick update on Wuthering Heights, feeling pretty much the same about this one. I am very, very close to the end. We'll probably finish this one tomorrow. I think I have about two and a half hours left of the audiobook. So I'll probably finish this one tomorrow, drive into and from work. Um, this one is weird because sometimes I feel really engaged with the story for like, I don't know, a couple, like 20 pages, 30 pages. It's hard to judge because I'm listening to the audiobook of it. But say for like half an hour I'll be really engaged with the story and then for the next half an hour I'll just be a little bit confused, out of it, don't really feel too much towards the characters. It's really really odd. I It's such an up and down thing for me. I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying it kind of more than I expected. This is the thing, I'll hit a high point and I'll be like I'm loving this and then I'll hit a low point and I'm like I don't really know what's going on, it's a bit strange. There's some, some things I love about it. I love how gothic it is in places. It's kind of dark in places, which I really, really like. 
and then there's other parts where I'm like this is really dull and I don't really know what's going on. I did look up a kind of character map like family tree kind of thing just to see the characters in a more visual way because they talk about so many different characters and they all have the same surname because they're all from like three different families and um, if they call them by their surname I never know who they are. Um, so I thought I'd just look up a quick character map and that has definitely helped because I do know who people are now. But yeah, I'll give some more like full thoughts and feelings once I finish but I think it's probably going to be like a three and a half star read because I am enjoying it but it really depends on the ending. It really really depends on these last kind of like 50 pages or so I think I've got left. Um, so it could be really good and I could leave it really really loving it. Who Who knows? I'm also reading Blackout. Um, I am about a quarter of the way through this. I'm 60 something pages through this. This is a weird one. I'm not picking it up until quite late and I am really really enjoying it when I read it but I don't really have like a desire to read it. I'm not really feeling really really drawn um, and when I read it I'm not necessarily too like drawn into continuing reading it. I think that's partly because the chapters are quite long because they are kind of short stories that are interspersed. Definitely I think that they are going to all come together which is quite cool. I've only seen a couple of different viewpoints so far from different characters but the one I just read which was the second story I really really enjoyed that one and I'm trying to find which one that actually was. It was Mask Off by Nick Stone. Really really liked that. I don't think I've read anything by Nick Stone before. I've read stuff from Angie Thomas and Nicola Yoon. That might actually be the only people I've read from maybe the others in like short story collections before but I can't really remember. Um, but yeah I'm really enjoying it. Really excited to get to Nicola Yoon's part because she writes great stories. Um, yeah enjoying it, going to just see how it goes. I just need to like kind of sit down with it for a bit longer and maybe not read it like last thing at night because I think that's also making me lose interest a little bit. So that's Blackout for now. <laughs> And then my last couple of updates are book mail and books that I have gotten. So yesterday, as I mentioned, I went to a bookshop and I found this. This is a 10th anniversary edition of The Sky Is Everywhere by Jandy Nelson, which I own a paperback of and I really, really enjoyed it, but it's not my favourite book by her. I'll Give You the Sun is one of my favourite books in the world. And then I read this one, I was a little bit let down in comparison to I'll Give You the Sun, but I did still really, really enjoy it. And I saw this one and it's so pretty and it's such a nice play on the original cover and this spine is gorgeous and I love the foiling on this. Um, and I had some points on my card so I got it for free so I just thought, you know what, I want to buy something. It's not adding to my TBR because I own it, it's free. It's a beautiful edition, it's a book that I really really like and I hope they do one of these for I'll Give You The Sun even though that's the 10th anniversary for I'll Give You The Sun is five years away, four years away, four years away. Um, I still really really like this edition and I hope they do one so I can have matching ones because I imagine it will be beautiful and with maybe gold foiling that'll be really nice. Anyway, the main event of this little bit of this video I had a parcel this morning. I talked a little bit about this the other day in a <laughs> bit of a rambly part of this vlog where I just won something on eBay that I've been waiting for for a very very long time and I think it's in this parcel <laughs> and I'm not ready to open it and I might cry at finally having this book after years and years of searching for it like years of searching for it and at least six months of looking for it every single day and bidding on ones on eBay for a while. I do want to point out if anyone knows the value of this it was very expensive like it's the most expensive book I've ever bought and I am heavily subsidising that by books that I'm selling at the moment. This has been a long-term goal for me to get this and a long-term thought process of how I'm going to pay for this book because I couldn't justify paying this outright and I couldn't afford that and I just wouldn't do it. So the, the long-term kind of goal of this has been to sell books that I no longer wanted. I would never ever buy a book, especially a special edition, without the intention of keeping it but there has been a couple of books that you will see or have seen in my unhaul video that I bought 
thinking I would absolutely adore them and didn't love them as much as I expected to and have therefore sold them and part of that money has gone towards this. I didn't sell stuff for crazy crazy amounts, um, I sold stuff for less than they have been going for because I would rather keep them go to people who really really want them. Um, but I just wanted to kind of explain that because um, yeah anyway <laughs> let's go into the more exciting part and actually open this. Um, I'm, not, I'm really not ready and I'm also really nervous. I had a nightmare that I opened this, I said nightmare, I had a dream that I opened this and it was the, it was a hardback proof copy, which don't exist I don't think, but, or it was, you know, I'm just, I'm nervous, I'm just so nervous I've been dreaming about this. It's not the wrong copy, it's the right copy. Oh my god. I don't know what to say, I don't know what to say. For those of you that don't know, this is the Waterstones exclusive rune edition of Lady Midnight, which is the first in the Dark Artifices series by Cassandra Clare. I I don't think I'd read Cassandra Clare's books when this was released. I think this was released in 2016. Sorry, I just opened it to the signature and now I'm overwhelmed again. 2016 it came out. I hadn't read her books then and then I went on and read her books I think the next year. And ever since then I've collected the rune editions, the special editions, not all of them, I don't get the Illumicrate and Fairy Loot ones or any like that, I just get the Waterstones ones. I did buy the Illumicrate Infernal Devices um, archives box, um, I don't buy all of the special editions of all of the books because I wouldn't have room for them, and I try and control myself. But the rune editions I have been collecting for a long time, and I missed out on this one initially, because I wasn't a Cassie fan and I didn't realise how exclusive these would be. And then in the past couple of years I've, well ever since I read Cassie's books I decided how much I wanted this one. I realised I've got all of the others, I bought all of the others new and I just really really wanted this one to complete the set. And then obviously realised how hard it was to get and I've since been searching for it everywhere. <laughs> I will show you this with the others in a minute. I'm really overwhelmed by the fact that I have this and I want to cry. Like this has been the one thing on my shelf that I've been looking at it for the past couple of years and thinking there was something missing and this has been the book that was missing and now I will look at it and it, it won't be incomplete anymore. Like this is the one thing I have always felt was missing from my shelf. It's the one book that I've always wanted. Let's put this on my shelf. <laughs> Thursday, I've been at work today, um, and I don't think I updated you yesterday when I said I would, so I thought I would just do an update on this Thursday evening with what I'm reading and stuff, and a few books that I actually got today. So my first update for Finale, I am nearly halfway through this. I can't say much about it because it's the third book in the series and I don't want to spoil anything. But I am enjoying this. I'm definitely enjoying it more than Legendary and not as much as Caraval. Um, there is still something like lacking that the magic that Caraval has, but it definitely kind of comes back in Scarlet's narration in this one, which I really, really like Scarlet's narration and some of her like quirks that she has. The only kind of complaint, the major complaint I have is that sometimes I'm getting a little bit not confused between the sisters but I feel like they have very similar narratives in this one especially because they both seem to be in love triangles right now um so I'm a little bit kind of like I wish one of them maybe wasn't um and sometimes it can be a bit like muddled up but I always know where I am it's just it's not a massive thing um it's just quite a similar thing <laughs> in this story I also finished Wuthering Heights earlier on my way back, back from work. Um, I listened to the audiobook entirely of this one in the end. So this one was a weird one 
I didn't quite enjoy it as much as I expected to. I found it very like up and down. Like sometimes I'd find myself quite enthralled with the story, find it very easy to listen to and I would know exactly who people were and what was going on. I was really enjoying it and it was kind of, you know, maybe four star for me, 4.5. Um, I don't think it was ever going to be a five star, but it kind of just let itself down in the fact that there was a big, there was big chunks of it throughout in which I didn't necessarily know what was going on or I didn't know who the characters were or I felt like things weren't explained very well. I definitely think that listening to the audiobooks of classics does help because it kind of makes them clearer sometimes. Um, whereas I think if I'd have read this physically I would have been rereading uh, paragraphs a lot. But the thing that's most confusing about this is the way it is told is basically by somebody asking a housekeeper about a person and then she narrates an entire story and that is the story of Wuthering Heights effectively which can be a little bit confusing in itself. Also they use the family names a lot um, as I'm, so, I'm sure you know Heathcliff is Heathcliff which sometimes can be confusing whether when, there, when there's more than one character with the same surname and you don't exactly know who they're talking about so I did look up a character map just to make sure I knew who was being talked about but yeah um I enjoyed it I'd like to reread it maybe maybe I'd like to reread it in physical format now that now that I know the story or listen to it again there were some parts of it that I absolutely loved and really grasped my attention especially the first kind of 50 pages or so really really loved it and there was some like gothic parts that I really really loved. I loved the setting and the moors and stuff like that. I thought that was really cool. Um, it just did let me down a little bit but I would be interested to reread this in the future definitely. And then I'm also still reading Blackout. I don't have too much to go off this one. I think I have about 80 pages left and I'm really really enjoying this one. The story that I last read was bear with me a second all the great love stories and dust by danielle clayton which i really really enjoyed i liked the characters and i loved the setting because it was set in new york public library however the main the main character and her narration had footnotes which like i appreciate and i understand why they were there but it really pulled me out of the story because there was asterisks and then there was footnotes and every time there was an asterisk I needed to read the footnote and then I had to find where I was and I was like oh where was I now um and it kind of threw me out of the story a bit so that one kind of let me down a little bit but I really liked the narrative of it so I think I must only have a couple of stories left in this one I'm excited to see where it goes in the end and to see how these people come together at the end of it which I think they're going to because the cool thing about this is they all mention characters from the other stories which I really really like and I think that's really cool and then my next update is for some books that I got today so I got this I think is a finished copy but this was sent to me by the publisher this is the pink line the world's queer frontiers and this was published by Profile, so thank you to Profile for sending me this. I did request this one because I do want to educate myself more on LGBT history and I think this one basically focuses on, um, so it's individual accounts of different people from around the world and um, about how their communities have been affected and individuals have been affected and it's a definitive account of how LGBTQ plus people's rights have become one of the world's new human rights frontiers in the second decade of the 21st century. So this one just sounded really interesting and it's definitely something that I want to educate myself more on so I thought I would pick it up and see how it is. I didn't realise how thick it was or how small the text is but obviously this is really really good, there is so much information in here and I'm just really interested to hear these people's stories. Um, I also... It also says on the back that it was chosen by Time as one of the 100 must-read books of 2020. So I definitely am glad to have that one. I also picked up The House and the Cerulean Sea by TJ Clune. This is the American paperback of it. And I have never seen 
a copy of this in the UK. This is incredibly popular in the US and has been a massive release, like a really hyped release I think on social media and booktube and I've seen it everywhere and I've really really wanted to read it and I've never seen a copy in the UK and I knew that it would be hard to get hold of and I couldn't get one through work and th this came in today and as soon as I unpacked it from the delivery I said to my colleague I'm gonna buy that because I've never seen one and what if we don't have one again? I want to own this book, I want to read this book. I don't know too much about it, I know it's meant to be really emotional I think and quite heartwarming. It is published by Tor and I think it is an adult book um but it is about somebody who's a caseworker for in the department in charge of magical youth so he's a caseworker, like a social worker for kids that have magical abilities and I think there is this house in the Cerulean Sea um, and that is basically all I know but I'm very excited to read this one, I'm very excited to actually have a copy finally because I honestly didn't know if I was ever going to get one um, in the UK because I just haven't seen any anywhere. Um, I really like this cover as well, I'm not a massive fan of the yellow bit but I really like this cover. So very very happy, it says oh my god V. Schwab has blurred it, blurbed it on the front and it says I loved it, it's like being wrapped up in a big gay blanket, simply perfect. Now I want to read this so badly because that is amazing, what a, what a quote from V. Schwab there, what a quote, amazing. Anyway, that is my update for today, finished a book, part way through two books and got two books today. All exciting stuff, excited to add this to my TBR, I will update you tomorrow, probably once I finish Blackout because I don't anticipate my it taking me too long to read so I'll update you then. <laughs>just update you on my reading and also me and Mark went back to the bookshop today and we both bought a few things so I thought I would take you through those. So for a reading update I am 344 pages through Finale, just finished our pages for the day so I'm not sure how much I have left because it feels like it's still quite a chunk and we're meant to finish this tomorrow. So here it is. Just over 450 pages long so we have over 100 pages of this one to read tomorrow. I might try and get ahead of myself tonight a little bit just because I don't have that much time over the weekend because I'm working all weekend but I'm really enjoying it. It's definitely kind of a wild ride and it's still falling kind of in the middle of um, Caravelle and Legendary. I think I'm enjoying it more than Legendary but not quite as much as Caravelle. I'm really liking having both of the sisters points of view in this one which was not necessarily what I expected from it so I'm enjoying that. Some of it I like more than others but I like how the sisters are both kind of going through some emotional and physical turmoil in different ways. As I said I think yesterday in my update there was a little bit of kind of confusion or I do feel like the sisters have a very similar kind of similar things happening to them but it's not necessarily a bad thing I just have to keep everything straight in my head when I'm reading it but I am really enjoying it finding it quite fast paced which is cool I haven't read any more of Blackout but I do want to read at least a little bit more tonight if I can I've also read this today which I didn't expect to read at all but Mark just handed it to me um, and wanted me to read it and it's called the terrible and wonderful reasons why I run long distances and this is by The Oatmeal who is Matthew Imnan I think, Imnan maybe, um, who also you will probably recognise Matthew Imnan who is aka The Oatmeal who also wrote 
um, How to Tell If Your Cat Is Plotting To Kill You, which is one of his more um, popular releases. But this is just like a graphic novel style, funny, comical book about running. And um, me and Mark are both runners. I wouldn't say I necessarily run long distances. I run five and ten k's. Um, but this one was very, very relatable, very funny, and I very much enjoyed it. I just read it in about half an hour and there is some a lot of honest stuff in here that I really really related to with running so that was really cool and I'm glad that Mark randomly handed it to me to read just in the middle of a conversation he made a reference to it so I ended up reading it but yeah I um really really enjoyed this one and then we went to the shop so I have a couple of updates from the stuff that we bought there so I'll start with the things that Mark bought so we got him Heartstopper Volume 3 I bought him Volume 4 at work yesterday but we didn't have Volume 4 Volume 3 at work so we went to another Waterstones to get him Volume 3 um so he has the whole of the Heartstopper series now because he does have Volume 2 he's read Volume 1 and he knew he wanted to carry on with them so yeah, whole of the Heartstopper set, which is really cool. He also bought Solaris, which I have absolutely no idea what this is about, other than the fact it is a sci-fi, um, and apparently is by a Polish author, is a psychological drama and profound exploration of the science fiction genre. So all I know about this is that it's sci-fi and it's set kind of in space and apparently it's about a psychologist who arrives at a space station which is orbiting the mysterious planet of Solaris. And he wants to find out whether there should be research there should be terminated because there is a lack of progress there. So I think they're trying to find out whether there's life on that planet. But he finds the station all but deserted and its struggling crew seem haunted by the hallucinations of figures from their individual pasts. And then Calvin himself is visited in the middle of the night by a woman who is outwardly identical to his dead wife. Wow, so this sounds like a horror sci-fi. It sounds really interesting. And it says, will Calvin be able to resist the disturbing ambience of Solaris and the emotional pull towards the living, breathing like likeness of the woman he loved? I really want to read this now. It's very short and it sounds really interesting. Kind of sci-fi, creepy horror thing, um, which I quite like. And I like the cover of this one. So it's quite interesting. It says it's a cult classic as well. So this is something that Mark bought. Um, we also picked up Weathering With You. This is the first manga, um, which I didn't actually know was coming out. I think Mark had um, told me and did, we didn't know that it was coming out, but um, I had never seen a copy of it. And this is just volume one. I think there's gonna be a couple of volumes. Um, so same as Your Name, there is a couple of volumes of the Your Name manga. And then there is a, kind of spin-off series called Earthbound and there is a light novel of your name and there is a light novel of Weathering With You. If you don't know these are um, anime films by Makoto Shinkai that we both love. I think Weathering was one of Mark's favourite films of last year and one of my favourite films of last year. Your Name is one of my, if not my favourite film of all time. I absolutely love that film. But I still really, really loved Weathering. I've read the light novel of Weathering and we knew we both wanted to read this so very excited to read this one. I might actually read this over the next couple of days um, because it's going to be a super quick one to read because it is the first volume of manga. And then the other, the last things that I bought were the first two um, paperbacks for Ember in the Ashes and A Torch Against the Night purely because I've decided I want to collect these in paperback as I've recently unhauled, as you saw in my unhaul video, which will now be up. I unhauled my fairy loot set purely because I'm happy to have the paperbacks, they have very similar covers, so I managed to pick these up. I just need to get um, a paperback of a Reaper at the Gates and a Sky Beyond the Storm when that comes out, because it's only out in hardback at the moment. And then I'll have another complete set of this one in case I want to reread it, and I do really like these books and these covers, just not enough to have the fairy loot hardback set, and I wanted them to go to somebody who wanted them more than me and I'm happy to have the paperbacks of them in this case. So that was our kind of little haul from Waterstones and how I'm doing with my reading. I will update you over the weekend with how I'm doing. I need to finish both Blackout and Finale in the next couple of days. Not for any reason, but I just wanna carry on with other things in the readathon right now. So hopefully definitely need to finish Finale tomorrow, but that is a lot of pages to get done while I'm working. So we will see, also have other things happening tomorrow and Sunday. So I will update you tomorrow with how that is going. <laughs> Hi, 
it's Saturday night. Um, I've actually come out to stay with my mum and dad in their camper van tonight. I've just come from work and I'm going back to work from here tomorrow. It's an absolutely beautiful evening and I've just finished Blackout. I really, really enjoyed this one. It was a collection of six love stories that were set in a blackout in New York City and there was a lot of LGBT characters in these stories which I really, really liked. In fact, my favourite of these stories I think was um, one that was sapphic which I really really enjoyed and it was just so cute. Honestly all of these were so cute and I loved that they kind of intertwined. I expected them to kind of intertwine it in a big way at the end but they actually didn't ever kind of all join each other um, like was kind of hinted throughout the novel so that was a little bit disappointing but I did really really enjoy this one. I'm just trying to find the title of the one that I enjoyed the most which was Made to Fit by Ashley Woodfolk which I really really loved. I haven't actually read any of Ashley Woodfolk's books before so that's interesting to know that that one was my favourite. There was also one that was kind of weaved throughout the book. Um, there was Most of the stories were just kind of one thing and that was it but there was some that were um there was one that was weaved throughout the book um and appeared after every story which was really nice that was i thought that was a really sweet way to do it this one comes out on the 24th of june this is a proof copy so thank you to electric Mon monkey for sending me this one i really enjoyed it so yeah it comes out on the 24th of june and go and read it it's a lovely queer um love story collection in a blackout in new york city it was a baby of the pandemic i was reading in the back which i thought was really nice as well as it's evidently been written like remotely between these six authors i also just want to say a thank you to Orion for sending me a proof of the island home by libby page this comes out in june as well i'm not sure of the exact date that this one's released but I don't think it's out yet. Um, 24th of June as well so another one that comes out on the 24th. This is by the same author as The Lido who wrote, well The Lido is one of my favourite books ever. I read that one last year and I loved it so much. This is an adult book about an island. Um, people that live, I think they're moving, this mother and daughter are moving from London maybe? London to the Isle of Kip. Um, which and then it's a set between um the people that are moving and somebody who already lives on kip i think which very excited to read this one because i loved the lido so much so thank you very much to orion for sending me this one i'm now going to try and read a little bit of finale i meant to be finishing that today but i'm not sure if i'll be able to as you can see it's already evening and i've been here for a while it's gone seven o'clock now and obviously want to spend some time with my mom and dad so um we will see whether I get that finished today. If not, I'll probably get it done tomorrow, so it doesn't matter too much. So I will probably update you tomorrow or when I finished finale. And I will end the vlog tomorrow the vlog tomorrow and um, start another one on Monday. welcome to the end of the vlog it's sunday night right now it's sunday evening and i thought i would just wrap up the week and kind of update you on what i've read since i talked to you yesterday even though i had a lovely evening with my mom and dad i actually managed to read about 150 pages last night so i actually finished just about finished finale i'm holding it upside down and back to front there we go um, so I finished Finale last night. I really enjoyed this one. I did feel like the ending was a little bit rushed and just felt like a lot was happening at the end and I was struggling to kind of keep on top of everything. Definitely me and Alex were talking about this yesterday. I definitely feel like overall this is a series where the author had an amazing idea for the first book and pulled it off amazingly. And then the other two kind of do fall a little bit flat. I'm not sure if this is going to be a four star or a four and a half. I did like a lot of the aspects of it and I really liked that it was from Tella and um, Scarlett's point of views and I liked a lot of the kind of magic stuff but I definitely didn't feel enthralled in comparison to Caraval. Didn't, it's really difficult to say, it's really difficult to compare it to Legendary so I'm not exactly sure how I feel about it in comparison. 
I did definitely feel more captivated by this one and I really like Scarlett's narration so I was glad she was back but I'm not sure how much better than Legendary it is. I'm gonna have to reflect on that one a little bit. So I don't know if it's gonna be a difficult review to write and one to rate because it's between, I think it's probably gonna end up being a four star by the end just because the ending kind of did let me down a little bit with how rushed it was. I also don't know if I talked about this the other day, but I did finish Wuthering Heights the other day. I also finished, weirdly, I started and finished The Railway Children. I started this yesterday morning just because I needed a new audiobook and this was brilliant. This was so good. I didn't really have any expectations for this, bar the fact that Alex really, really likes it and had recommended it to me. On that subject, I've actually kind of cheated the system a little bit in a way that I didn't realise and I put this down as a possibility for Whateverthon for outside of my comfort zone and I put this one and Wuthering Heights down, not realising they are both in my challenge to read a classic a month for the rest of the year. So I've actually now read two on that list rather than one for June. So I may have to get another classic recommendation from my Wordsworth set for one of the months of the year now because I didn't realise I was skipping ahead and reading two. However, I loved this. This was only about five hours long on audio and I've just been reading it while driving around the British countryside and walking and running and honestly the best way to read it was like that, appreciating the countryside, seeing railways in the distance while reading this about the British countryside. It was so lovely and it was so heartwarming and there was just so many good aspects of this that I really didn't expect. I loved the characters, I loved the kind of adventure aspects of it, there was always something happening, the children were always up to something. Loved the family aspect of this, I loved the discussions of being poor, and kind of wealth in this one and relying on your friends and people around you. There was like a mystery element running all the way through it because you didn't know what's happening with the dad. Honestly really enjoyed this. There are very few faults and this one might actually be a five star. Definitely a four and a half if not a five. This was a big surprise for me. I, I thought I would like it but Definitely not as much as I did. This is probably one of the favourite classics that I've read so far, definitely so far this year. And after a few that have kind of fallen a bit flat, it was really nice to pick this one up. So adding this one to my whatever thon um readathon book so far. So I really enjoyed that. My next read, I don't know if I've mentioned, is going to be Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry. Um, I do have a few more on the TBR that I want to save for a holiday that I'm going on a week tomorrow, very exciting. Um, so I will be vlogging that as well. And me and Alex are going to do a buddy read while we're on that holiday together and I have a few books that I want to save for that holiday. So this one is going to be for my, well it's for the whatever thon prompt, um, the last letter of the book you last read has to match the first letter in the book you'll want to read next. So I'm using Finale for this because I just finished Finale and the Railway Children. And I'm going to go for the E at the end of Finale to the E at the end at the start of Excuse Me While I Ugly Cry. I looked through my TBR for options for this and there really wasn't many. And I do really want to read this one. So this one it is going to be. Um, so I'm very excited for this. So me and Alex won't be buddy reading for about a week now. So it's weird not having a buddy read. I have completely free reign over how much I read and what I read, which is odd um, and quite exciting. So I'm gonna pick this one up next. I also have a little bit of an update on books that I bought today. Really didn't expect to do this, but I bought a Reaper at the Gates. Um, I, if you remember from a couple of days ago, I bought An Ember in the Ashes and A Torch Against the Night in these paperback covers and I wanted to get this one. Went to order it into my shop that I work in and realised we had one on the shelf, so that was handy. So I now have three out of four of these. The fourth one is coming out in paperback in December and I'm very happy to see that the cover is the same and will match this set, so I'm glad to finally have these in a paperback set, which is cool. 
And then I bought two that I really didn't expect to buy today, one of them being Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. I've wanted to read this for a while because Books Nest, actually Books Nest loves both of these books. Beth, my fellow Beth um, from Books Nest has loved both of these books, so I did want to read them because of her recommendation. And then my colleague Amy and my lovely very close friend Amy did, um, decided she wanted to read this one and we're going to buddy read it. So I don't know too much about it other than it is a gothic literature about a woman called Naomi, I think is how you pronounce her name. And she's a glamorous socialite who has a life of parties and entertainment. And then she receives a frantic letter from her newlywed co cousin who is begging to be rescued from a mysterious doom. So then she heads to High Place, which is an estate in the mountains of Mexico that is owned by the secluded Doyle family and she's trying to find out what has happened to her cousin. Um, and then they find out that the house is a dilapidated relic and the inhabitants are apparently worrying. <laughs> um, so there's an alluring yet menacing husband, foreboding father and other relatives. And then the house itself begins evade, evade, yeah, invading Naomi's dreams with visions of blood and doom. So this one sounds quite creepy, but I do really want to read it, especially because Books Nest recommends it. So me and Amy wanted to do another buddy read soon. So we've decided to do this one, which is exciting. I also bought All the Hidden Gifts. This is or All Our Hidden Gifts, sorry, by Caroline O'Donoghue. This one is because our friend Jo didn't want to buddy read Mexican Gothic so we wanted to decide on one that we all wanted to buddy read because we like doing buddy reads together and haven't in a while and Jo read this recently, well sorry Jo bought this recently on the recommendation of Books Nest as well um, and I, she hasn't read it yet so me and Amy decided to pick these up as well so we can do a buddy read together which is very very exciting and I don't know much about this one other than that there is tarot cards in it and the main character finds a pack of tarot cards and starts giving readings to everyone around her. Then she does a reading for her ex-best friend and a strange card appears in the deck and everything goes wrong. Her ex-best friend Lily doesn't come to school the next day and Maeve knows she's been taken somewhere the police will never find her. Only the cards and something older, something even more powerful can bring her back. This sounds really cool and I love the cover of this one and how it's kind of like a tarot card so I'm very excited to read that one. So anyway that wraps up my vlog for the week. I don't know how many books I've managed to read but I think it's around five or I've finished around five so that is kind of cool and I will start vlogging again tomorrow with week three of the readathon which is very exciting. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Keep a lookout for my next vlogs for the Whatever You Wantathon readathon. And yeah, if you did enjoy this, please give it a like and comment down below. Let me know if you're taking part in the readathon as well. And subscribe to the channel to see more vlogs and other things like this. And I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>